Okay, so hey everyone, um, I sometimes get requests to do ASMR stuff or like more book readings, so um, this video is going to be a completely non-cubing related random video where I'm just going to talk about life advice um, followed by a short book excerpt. So uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is one of the central rules to how I live my life. Um, it's called the centipede's dilemma. I uh, hold strongly to this belief and I run most of my competitions with this. I don't believe in strict staff schedules because the thing with schedules is if one thing goes wrong the entire schedule afterwards goes wrong. You can uh, try to fix this with buffers but in itself um, I feel like that's not solving the problem. What if you just trust your staff believe in your friends, have faith in humanity, and I believe every single person deep inside is actually really smart. We're just sometimes lazy. When I run a competition, I never have staff schedules. I trust each person to fill in the gaps, to use situational awareness, to see what needs what, and me, myself, and the other delegates will uh, just uh, fill in the gaps by telling people, hey, come here, do this, uh, this is lacking. Um, identify bottlenecks on the fly. Have a loose plan, not too strict plan. Just have the core tenets of the plan and have lots of wiggle room. Because when you overthink things and you over plan, stuff can go awry and it's better to just improvise sometimes. So, the centipede's dilemma has another's name has another name it's called Humphrey's law and I swear to God this is like a complete coincidence that I found this and I relearned learned about this name and it was like a sign not that with the caveat that signs are fake and science is the only thing that's real um, let me reply to this message really fast um so uh, but signs are fun to think about. So, the centipede's dilemma basically goes to this old, old, old poem um, about a centipede. Um, it it meets some other animal, and this animal says, um, "Think about it. Um, how can you run so fast? Which leg comes after the other?" And when the centipede hears that, it starts to think about the movement of all of its joints and all of its legs and suddenly it can't keep track anymore. The centipede can no longer walk because there's too much to keep track of. The moral of the story is when we overthink things we suddenly find that we can't do them well and when we trust our instincts don't even think about it just do just take that first step don't even question yourself just go forward and do something Sometimes it's easier to do that than to actually think about it consciously. For me, I can't do slow solves to save my life. Um, I rely completely on instinct. And in competition, I seize up sometimes because my nerves get in the way of instinct. Sometimes I find that in life, many things that we do, if you just trust yourself, have confidence, self-esteem, believe in yourself because the moment you don't believe in yourself that's when impossibilities can occur but as long as you believe there's still that small iota that small chance that things can happen so always believe in yourself and just do it that's it there's only two steps identify what you need to do and do it don't let the centipede's dilemma well like don't let what happened to the centipede happen to you so uh, that was the life advice. The next thing I'm going to talk about and read is called um, uh, Spark Joy by Marie Kondo. It's basically a re repeat of her most uh, popular famous book called uh, The Magic of Tidying Up, I think. Um, and this was a book that was recommended to me by one of my most intelligent friends ever. And uh, basically, it, it, there's, there's a few core points. The book is actually quite repetitive. Um, and it gets into like the small minutia and details that are totally not relevant. So uh, I'm just going to read a small su summary of it because I don't feel like buying the actual book. 
Um, let me try to pull it up. Um, so basically I'm just going to read the most important part and I'm going to jump around a little bit so I'm going to skip around. Um, I am not an audiobook so I'm just going to read this um, to portray some ideas and uh, I don't know some people like to hear which which is a huge honor I'm very honored that people like my voice um, so let's go spark joy by Marie Kondo um, uh, okay six basic rules of tidying the tidying process you're about to embark on is not about decluttering your house or making it look neat on the spur of the moment for visitors rather you are about to tidy up in a way that will spark joy in your life and change it forever. When you tidy the Kunmari way, which is the name of the author, like it's a portmanteau of the author's name, uh, you will experience several changes. For one thing, when you have finished cleaning up once and for all, you will never again relapse into clutter. You will always, you also will have clearly identified your values and what you want to do. You will be able to take good care of your possessions and will experience every day of feeling of contentment. I'm going to pause for a little bit. Uh, this book was actually translated from Japanese to English, and there might be a few things that were lost in translation, and you may notice that some of the articles and the uh, contractions have been left out. Um, that's because of the nature of uh, the Japanese language. Um, this translation is more literal than, uh, than like, um, interpretive. So... It does have a little bit of that Asian sound to it. Um, so I'm, I'm going to repeat, hopefully, in the right place. Uh, once, you have once you have experienced what your house feels like when it is completely tidy in the true sense of the term, you will never want to return to clutter, and the strength of that feeling will empower you to keep it tidy. Rule number one, commit yourself to tidying up. The Konmari method may seem a little hard. It does require time and effort, but... Having picked up this book with the intention of at least making a good stab at seriously tidying up, please keep reading and believe in yourself. Once you have made up your mind, all you need to do is apply the right method. Rule number two, imagine your ideal lifestyle. Think about what kind of house you want to live in and how you want to live in it. In other words, describe your ideal lifestyle. If you like drawing, sketch out what it looks like. If you prefer to write, describe it in a notebook. You can also cut out photos from magazines. You would rather start tidying right away, would you? That is precisely why people suffer rebound after tidying up. When you imagine your ideal lifestyle, you are actually clarifying why you want to tidy and identifying the type of life you want to live once you have finished. The tidying process thus represents a huge turning point in a person's life, so seriously consider the ideal lifestyle to which you aspire. Rule number three, finish discarding first. One characteristic of people who never seem to finish tidying up is that they attempt to store everything without getting rid of anything. When things are put away, a home will look neat on the surface, but if the storage units are filled with unnecessary items, it will be impossible to keep them organized and this will inevitably lead to a relapse. The key to success in tidying is to finish discarding first. You can only plan where to store your things and what to store them in once you have decided what to keep and what to discard because only then will you have an accurate grasp of how much actually needs to be stored. Thinking about where to store things or worrying about whether you can fit everything in will only distract you from the job of discarding, and you will never finish. That would be a terrible waste, so instead, consider any storage solutions made during the discarding process as temporary and focus all of your attention on the sorting the next category. This is the secret to getting the job done quickly. Rule number four. Tidy by category, not by location. One of the most common mistakes people make is to tidy room by room. This approach doesn't work because people think they have tidied up when in fact they have only shuffled their things around from one location to another or scattered items in the same category throughout the house, making it impossible to get an accurate grasp of the volume of things they actually own. The correct approach is to tidy by category, which means tidying up all the things in the same category in one go. For example, when tidying the clothes category, the first step is to gather every item of clothing from the entire house in one spot. This allows you to see objectively how much you have. 
Confronted with an enormous mound of clothes, you will also be forced to acknowledge how poorly you have been treating your possessions. It's very important to get an accurate grasp of the sheer volume for each category. Rule number five, follow the right order. It is crucial not only to tidy by category, but to follow the correct order, which is clothes, books, papers, komono, which is miscellaneous items in Japanese, and finally, sentimental items. Have you ever run across old photos while tidying and found the hours have passed while you were looking at them? This is a very common blunder, and it clearly illustrates the point of tidying in the proper order, which is designed specifically to hone your ability to distinguish what sparks joy. Clothes are ideal for practicing this skill, while photos and other sentimental items are the epitome of what you should not touch until you have perfected it. And finally, rule number six. Ask yourself if it sparks joy. The criterion for deciding what to keep and what to discard is whether or not something sparks joy. When deciding, it's important to touch it, and by that, I mean hold it firmly in both hands as if communing with it. Pay close attention to how your body responds when you do this. When something sparks joy, you should feel a sil- When something sparks joy, you should feel a little thrill, as if the cells in your body are slowly rising. When you hold something that doesn't bring you joy, you will notice that your body feels heavier. Remember that you are not choosing what to discard, but rather what to keep. Keep only those things that bring you joy. And when you discard anything that doesn't, don't forget to thank it before saying goodbye. By letting go of the things that have been in your life with a feeling of gratitude, you foster appreciation and a desire to take better care of the things in your life. Um, that's actually all you really need to know for both books. That, that's the whole crux of it. Um, the rest of it is just... Um, Repetition, anecdotes, examples, uh, minutia, miscellanea, uh, things like that. But the whole point of the book is, if something doesn't bring you joy, why would you keep it in your life? And always be grateful for the things you have, and tidying can really change your life. I, I, I actually could use more of that, but this book, it has some pretty good ideas. Um, so right now I'm at like 12 minutes... 30 seconds and I need to go do adult things like cook dinner, laundry, email people. So I hope you liked this uh, talking thing. If you want to hear me read more books and give more life advice, um, I, prob I probably will do that in like the coming months. So as always, thanks a lot for listening. See you in the next video.